Hi and uh, welcome everybody to my next video. Um, first thing first, I have to say a big thank you to everybody who's subscribing to my videos, um, liking my videos, etc. Um, it's much appreciated to know that whatever I'm doing is useful for people out there. Um, as before, like I said, if you're new watching this, please hit the subscribe and like buttons. And of course, click on the bell icon so you know whenever I get a new video coming up. So. This one is um, following on really from that SMS uh, video that I did last week about notifications. This time it's based on um, CCTV. There was a couple of queries I've received, so I thought I might as well create a video and show you um, how, it, how to do it um, from what I've done in the past myself. So what we're gonna do is at the moment, we can ca integrate our camera systems, uh, CCTV within Fibaro using um, IP. And we also know that when you do, when you have motion detection on cameras, you can get the image recording. And, but how do we then, how do we then take images from that? How do we integrate the two together? Well, I've done it. Uh, I found a way, I found a way to do that. And it's uh, basically using a principle of alarm outputs from the um, NVRs. Now, depending on the model of NVR you have will all will depend on how many alarm outputs you have. So I believe from memory, um, an eight, a four channel might have just, might have one or no outputs. So you won't be able to do it with that. Whereas an eight channel may have one to two outputs. I have a 16 channel recorder, which has actually four outputs. So that allows me to do four triggers. So I'm going to do a demo with just two at the moment, just for testing purposes to show you how it works. I'm also then created a little scene, which then takes those images and emails them to me. Now, why do we do this? We do this because if someone's coming into the garden, for example, or looking around the car, we don't want an image all the time. We'd rather have, if somebody's just walking by the house, um, which is fine, no problem, uh, you know, from the outside of your garden. And with traditional motion detection, the, the, you know, the cameras will record that motion and it'll be stored, but we don't wanna be alerted every time. So what we're going to be doing, we're gonna be utilizing two features. One's called intrusion detection and one's called line crossing detection. As the name suggests, we're gonna be drawing arbitrary lines on our images. So if you're walking from zone A to zone B, or zone B to zone A, or both A to B or B to A, we can get an image recording. So that is gonna make the, our, you know, our capturing of images more specific um, for what we need it for. Secondly, the other area is called intrusion detection or loitering. So for example, if you have a camera on your front door, back door, and you put the, in the zone around the door, but only if they're there for more than say, three seconds, four seconds. So for example, when somebody's knocking on the door or the kids are coming in, open on, or you're unlocking the door and walking in, um, you only take maybe three or four seconds, then you don't get that image. However, if somebody's loitering there waiting and they've been there for five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds, that's when the image will be taken. So we can actually set that time frame as well. So let's get this sorted. So uh, to actually get it done, what we need are universal binary sensors. So what I'm going to do is show you the wiring for that first. Right, excuse the crude drawing. Um, art isn't my strongest form. But here we have a, a universal binary sensor. So that one. Or uh, a smart implant. And um, these are the wires. I've just drawn five wires to show it. Uh, ignore the rest of the wires. So you've got the red wire, which is your positive supply. Then you've got a blue wire, which is your negative supply. You then got a yellow wire, a green wire, and of course the secondary blue wire. 
there's a there's a white brown wire in there which you can ignore for now and of course the black antenna wire again you can ignore them for now so how do we wire it up this is my connector block that I had on my recorder which was a uh, one so zone one the ground zone two ground zone three ground and zone four ground so that represents my four alarmed outputs so I just put yellow into the first one green into port number three which represents zone two and then the blue wire went into the either this G or this G it doesn't matter which one you put them in as they're interconnected inside so you can put them into any of those and that's simple and then you add this to your home center once you've added it to the home center it will then appear as two icons make sure the default settings are fine which is normally closed and that's it um, that's how you wire it in so let's have a look at that on the home center itself so here's my home center and if I scroll back down to the bottom here we are so here's my NVR1 NVR2 NVR3 and NVR4 so like I said this represents just bring that across so this is one two three and four because I have uh, two modules connected to it and that's it it's all um, all set and all done now we need now what we need to do is we need to set it all up in the uh, recorder so here's my NVR and I've already logged in and I've chosen I'm, in, I'm sitting in my back room so I'm just gonna do everything from here in the back room so what you do once you've logged in so you type in the IP address of your recorder the two ways of doing this you can do this directly on your recorder and using the mouse and the many options or because it's connected to your network you can do it on a browser so I always do it on a browser same thing it doesn't make a difference what you use login whichever method on the side click on smart event go to the camera and choose your camera then you've got two intrusion detection and line crossing detection so we'll start with intrusion make sure you tick enable I'm going to clear the area so I can show you how to do it from scratch so click on draw area and then just draw an area so there click click and click so that's my area drawn sensitivity you can set that to anything you like from 0 to 100 so I've just put it on 100 threshold means how uh, how long we have to stand in that box so I have to stand in there for 10 seconds before it sends an email so that, shall we say that's the least sensitive or leave it on zero which is instant percentage percentage means how much of this area has to be covered for um, an email or a notification to be sent so let's again let's make it sensitive um, let's put it down to three percent once you've done that you hit save now depending on the model you can actually set up multiple regions and you can check by clicking on this box here but on my particular recorder it's only one region so that's all I can do I can't set up a secondary box the second box is arming schedule when do you want this to be active so if you want you can have it reduced to say that just this time frame here and that's it um, or just leave it on 24 hours if you want full 24 hours so just by dragging these sliders across um, to left and right and all the days you can then set when uh, when this uh, uh, detection or notifications are active finally the important bit is linkage method normal linkage that's when you want to send emails so that's to do with your app and everything which we're not going to bother with this is what we're interested in a1 a2 a3 and a4 so let's tick a2 uh, my sorry a1 as my first alarm output so whenever I have an intrusion detection alarm output number one will be triggered we we'll leave this trigger recording alone because it means that it will also carry on recording um, zone 7 
which is the back room as standard so this way we still get our recordings and then we just hit save so that's saved if we go to line crossing again make sure it's enabled I'm going to clear the area and then let's draw a new area so I'm going to draw this one oops uh, where is it oh let me just find how I can drag it oh sorry draw clear draw and then it can we need to drag it across oh, if I can find the right place to drag there uh, then we can drag this across so if I put that say there and then I grab the other arrow and put it there so we say A to B so we can choose A to B B to A or both either direction so let's just do that for now from B to A and then again we put the sensitivity to 100% and hit save again same I've only got one this one only allows me to do one rather than multiple so we just leave that on one for now and that's it that's all done now keep an eye on here oh sorry arming all for all every day all the time linkage method we're going to put it to a2 and hit save so when i move in that zone this one's going to be uh breached when i move in when i go do a line crossing is this one's going to be breached and i'll also then then we'll work on the scene in fact I'll show you the scene now as well I'll click on scenes right and here it's called NBR images I've just created a single scene for now but just to show you the principle so those are my two triggers 87 and 88 which is um, A1 and A2 or NBR1 and NBR2 and that's the Fibara call, the 428 is the ID of the camera. So if you watch my previous videos on how to add cameras to your system, send photo to user is the standard command. Two is my email address as it's a super user account. And so that means every time there's, it detects any mov movement or intrusion, line crossings, it will automatically send me an image to my email address. So let's go back and to devices so you can see it being breached and then I'll get up and uh, do a bit of walking There we are. So one went off because I walked past the line. And number two, sorry, one was in the intrusion area. And number two was the line crossing. And that's how it got triggered. So there's the movement. So what I'm going to do is then now I've got my emails. So if I just click on my email tab, and there you can see that the emails have come through to show. Um, the movement detection and everything that's come through the system so there you have it uh, just a quick intro to show you how to do how to get outputs from your recorder directly into your home center too this can work with the home center light it's just a matter of scene creation if you have any questions please leave it in the um, uh, comment section below if you've liked this video definitely hit like and uh, hope to see you uh, soon on my next video thanks for watching and bye for now